This is the third lesson in the Year 7 unit, Introduction to Computer Hardware. How it all works. Well, what we're going to have a look at over the next few minutes is we are going to take a look at the role of the CPU, the RAM and the hard drive. And in particular, we're going to understand how the CPU, the RAM and the hard drive work together when the computer is running. We'll also have a look at how input devices um, and output devices work alongside the CPU. So let's take a look at these devices in particular. Let's try and understand how these different components work together. So imagine that you're sat at your computer and you want to load up a particular program. You get your mouse, which is your input device, and you go to a particular icon and you double click that icon. What happens at that moment is that an instruction is sent to the CPU from the mouse requesting that that particular program is opened. The CPU being the brain of the computer goes, oh, I know that program is loaded on the hard drive. That's the long-term storage. It's stored in there. So we need to now retrieve that particular program from hard drive so that we can start working with it. So what the CPU does is it sends a request for that program to be loaded from the hard drive onto the RAM. Now remember, the hard drive is really good at storing data when there's no power. It's got large capacity, so it can store lots of programs, but it's very, very slow at um, effectively delivering data to the CPU. And because it's so slow, the CPU and the hard drive, they don't, they don't talk to each other fast enough for the program to be uh, loaded nice and quickly and for the user to have um, a good experience with the program. So what happens is that the um, CPU will ask for the program to be loaded, as I've just said, from the hard drive onto the RAM. So the hard drive, uh, the program on the hard drive will be loaded onto the RAM. And the RAM is very good at delivering data um, at speed. However, um, it will only uh, be able to store data when there's electricity running. So this is the reason why we don't store our programs on the RAM all the time, only when they're being used. So the program is loaded from the hard drive onto the RAM, and now the CPU is ready to work with that program at speed, because the RAM is really fast at talking to the CPU and delivering all of the instructions um, when the CPU needs them that relate to that particular program. Now you can think of how the CPU, the RAM and the hard drive work together a little bit like um, an office worker at an office desk. So when you open a program on your computer, you send a message to the CPU, to the brain of the computer, to deal with the request. Well, we've just seen that. Now the CPU will look for the program on the hard disk and we've, we've just um, had a look at that as well. But now what I want you to do to actually get this analogy working is imagine um, the hard drive as being like a filing cabinet. Okay, it's long-term storage. Um, the CPU you can imagine as being the office worker. So the office worker goes to the hard drive, looks in the drawers, finds the bit of work that it needs to, uh, to work with, and um, once it's found, that's the first part done. Now the problem is that obviously we can't work on documents um, as, a, as an office worker uh, by just sort of leaning into a drawer and trying to, to scribble all our notes on a piece of paper in a drawer. It's, it takes too long, um, it's awkward, it's uncomfortable. So what then happens is that the office worker would take that device, uh, that document, sorry, and would then place it onto uh, the table. Now, in the um, example of the computer, we saw that um, the CPU will then take get the program from the hard drive and put it onto the RAM. In the same way, uh, you can think of uh, this um, situation as being like the office worker getting the document, placing it on their table, on their desktop, so that they can start working on that document at speed. Okay, let's have a look at another example. So imagine you're typing a letter um, into um, a word processor when it's already running. So you press some buttons on the keyboard, that's an input device. The instruction to display a letter on the screen is then sent from the keyboard to the CPU. Now, because the program's already running, we don't need to talk to the hard drive. It's already being loaded on, already been loaded onto the RAM. So what the CPU will do 
is it will ask the RAM for instructions on how to display that particular letter on the screen. The RAM will then send the program instructions back to the CPU and now the CPU understands how to display that letter and so sends um, an instruction to the monitor to display that particular letter on the screen. So when you're using a program you use an input device for example a keyboard and a mouse if you click on a menu for example you're sending to the CPU your request to see that menu. The CPU will ask the RAM for the program's instructions on how to display the menu and when the CPU receives that instruction it will then be able to process them and send a message to monitor to the monitor to update the screen with the menu showing. So hopefully you've got a little bit of a better understanding now of how those important components, the CPU, the hard drive, the RAM and the input devices and output devices all work together when a program is running so that we can um, get our programs loading different elements um, onto the screen for us to be able to use.